Hey everyone, my name is Chloe and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So it is Monday at like 11 o'clock and I'm sitting outside of our local Kroger to do a grocery pickup and um, it was really funny. I just called in, told them my last name and the girl was like, can you spell that? And so I spelled it and then she said, could it be under any other names? And so I gave my parents name because we share a Kroger card, like a loyalty number. And so she's like, no. And then she's like, hold on, let me check one other thing. And literally somebody just, somebody else just got on the phone. And so I guess she just handed me off to the next person, but he found my order, not a big deal. So I'm waiting out for that. And uh, I just thought I'd get on an update and introduce this vlog. So currently I have a physical buddy read going on that I have not talked about. It is The Creeping and I can't think of who the author is so I'll put up a picture right here. But it's a buddy read with Karen from Rather Be Reading and I love her and I'm so excited to read this with her. It's something that's been on my shelves forever and so I'm kind of unmotivated to read it and I can only get it physically. I can't get it through ebook or audiobook. So um, we're doing just six chapters a day and making a five day read. So I'm hoping I can get my chapters done today, but I'm just like not in the mood at all to pick it up. But, and then on audio, I'm listening to, uh, hold on. I'm gonna have to check. Okay. So that was really ironic timing because I ha I paused it to see what the name of my audiobook was. And the girl also walked up with my groceries and my pickup window was between 11 and 12. And I got here at like 10 55 and it's 11 05. Like, I don't know what to do with myself because my husband was planning. He's got my daughter at home. He was planning on me go be being gone an hour because that's how long it took last time we did grocery pickup. And so I kind of feel like, like hiding out somewhere for the next at least half hour. But anyway, um, my audiobook is Vanishing Acts by Jody Pico, B, <laughs> Jody Pico, and it's interesting, but it's a 16 hour long audiobook, and I'm about halfway through, and it is too long. It, like, her books are always pretty long, but this one, especially, I feel like is just dragging. And it's about a woman who uh, was kidnapped by her own father, and so then her dad, at the very beginning, her dad gets like caught and it's 28 years later like he kidnapped her when she was a kid and now she's a full grown adult with her own kid and stuff and so it's the trial and all of that and so we hear from her her dad her fiance who is the lawyer and her mom who is actually still alive she thought she her dad told her he she died and so it's just it's a lot um her mother is hispanic i think mexican but I'm not for sure. And then there's also a lot of talk of like Na Native American um, history and kind of, it's just a lot of like rabbit holes that are interesting, but like, how is this relevant to the story? I don't know if it will be or won't be. So it's so long and I don't know when I'll get it done. But so the goal for today is finish my six chapters of my physical read, which I think it's like a 400 page book. We're dividing it by five. So whatever that makes, less than 100 pages. Uh, and it's a YA book, The Creeping. I'm not even sure what it's about. Karen and I just like cross-checked lists of TBRs that like we own. And we had two books, which is crazy because I agree with a lot of what she says. And like, I like a lot of, we don't, I don't read fantasy or sci-fi nearly as much as she does. But other otherwise, like I agree a lot with her opinions and can kind of trust her opinion. But we just only have two physical books in common. So we picked it because it was one we had in common. I don't really know anything about it. And I have read a page. <laughs> I read it last night and I talked about this in my, uh, some other video that I've done, but it is just so hard. Like the world is distracting. Everything that's going on is distracting. Yes. But my family <laughs> is like so distracting and they're always around, which is, I, I love, and I'm really trying to be grateful for this time, especially before we have a new baby, like this time just as the three of us. And so I'm not complaining. It's just very hard to get reading done. And so like I read a page and then I, I just stopped because we were about to watch the best singer or do something. I don't know what we were doing. So, um, I need to do a lot of reading on that. So, um, other things today is beautiful. I don't know if you can see outside, but it is like right now it's only 56, but the sun is shining. It's beautiful. We've had tons and tons of wind here and it's not windy. I mean, it's just like breezy today. So, 
Um, I'm feeling good, feeling positive, and that is something that has been kind of struggling lately. So I want to start thinking, maybe I'll do it in the vlogs every day or something. Something I am, like three things that are great um, every day. So today I'm gonna say the sun is beautiful. I'm gonna go home and hopefully play outside with my daughter because it's just gorgeous and getting outside and getting sunshine is mental health wonderful. Um, so two is going to be the romance takeover, uh, buddy read readathon that is happening this weekend. I am so excited about it. And the hosts, we all have a Voxer chat going on and there's just so much positivity and so much good stuff going on on there. And like we were talking this morning about nineties TV and just having a group of people who are like-minded and bookishness and that kind of stuff. And just having a group of people, um, that are all supportive and understand what's going on. And we're all just in this together. It feels so good. And so the YouTube and book booktube community is something I'm very, very grateful for, especially today. So that's two. Um, three is that I'm out of the house right now. I'm doing grocery pickup. Um, I'm trying to do, we are social distancing and isolating as much as possible with me being 30 weeks pregnant and us not knowing exactly what uh, the COVID-19 does to babies and or pregnant mothers. Um, we're being very serious about social is isolation, but we are also trying, my mental health it does not do well with being isolated and being at home and not getting out. And so I'm trying to do the little things like coming to do grocery pickup, taking walks outside of our house, uh, in our neighborhood and that kind of stuff. And so those, I'm very grateful that I'm able to do this. And our grocery store has been pretty good about restocking things. So there were a handful of things that I didn't, wasn't able to get that were in my order, but nothing too per too, too per critical super critical and um so i'm just very grateful those are three things that i'm thinking about right now if you are watching this comment below what is what are some good things that you can see going on in this because it's very very easy to focus on the inconveniences and the scary things that are going on and just all of the tragedy that's going on um but there's also a lot of good going on. And so I really, really, really want to be intentional about focusing on that and talking about it. So if you have anything good, let me know. Um, that's all of my update for now. Reading those two things, gonna get some work done in them today and we'll talk later. Bye. Hey guys, so I just put my daughter down for a nap and I laid here on the couch with my book, Creepy, uh, The Creeping, and it's by... Alexandra Cyrilly, maybe? And this is the one I'm buddy reading with Karen from Rather Be Reading. And I haven't started it really. I mean, I've read a page. But I just sat down and spent 15 minutes trying to get the stupid fan on. You guys, like, I've never felt dumber in my entire life. I had to call my husband, and apparently there's a remote. And let me just show you. There's a remote, but the remote will not work unless the light is on. And like, what kind of house do we live in? This is freaking me out that it, like, it is smarter than I am. And so I hate that. But now it's like 2.30, so I've wasted maybe 2.40. I don't know. I've wasted a ton of nap time trying to figure out the freaking fan. So now I'm going to read and it's clouding over. And so I'm like kind of nervous that I'm going to pass out because I'm so tired. And so I don't know, I text Karen and told her like, I'm about to read and I cannot lie, I'm so unmotivated because she is in Australia. And so she's um, like, I don't know, we were talking this morning and it was 7.30 here and like 11 o'clock where she, 7.30 in the morning here, 11 o'clock at night there. So I have no idea what time that means it is right now, but she sent me like a whole audio message of her thoughts for the chapters for today. So I have got to get on this reading because I don't want to be day one already behind. Gosh. So I'm going to go read as much as I can and try not to fall asleep and please ignore my disaster of a living room. Thanks. Bye. Hey everyone. I was just going to get on an update. It's about 5:30 on Monday. And, um, so I finished my section of, of the creeping today for um, my buddy read. So that was the first like 90 pages and I am kind of critical about it. And Karen is really liking it. So it's about a girl who, um, she and her friend went missing when they were six years old and she came back, but the friend did not. So, um, now it's 11 years later, she's 17 and 
the school, like every the, all the high schoolers and stuff have like a party every year to like on the day of this anniversary. And I just think that is super duper weird of like a, the an, an anniversary of the kidnapping. And so they have this party and it's like, they're all like dressed up kind of creepily and whatever this, this year a body is found. And so then it's trying to figure out still what happened to the little girl that was taken 11 years ago. Um, and then certain things start happening, like other murders obviously start happening. So they're just trying to figure it all out. And I think that there's two detectives that have kind of kept in touch with the girl who came back. Her name is Stella. And they tell her, like, well, it's just one of them now, but tells her a lot more about the case than I think like is realistic because she's still a 17 year old kid and so she knows a lot more and like they give her a lot more information than they give the public even and I just don't think that's really realistic and then Stella is also in a group of four girls and one of them she's kind of portrayed as like the shallow person but then she's supposedly like a ride or die friend but then um Stella keeps a whole bunch of secrets about from her because she's worried about the judgment and so I just am not buying like the ride or die friendship between these four girls and I know that's a huge component of this story so overall I'm just reading it very critically and uh I'm not probably going to say a whole lot more about it because it is like a horror thriller YA book and so I like things are going to start happening that I don't want to spoil anything so I probably won't say too much more about it but for me right now it's like a three star I think Karen's really enjoying it and it's got almost four stars it's like 3.66 so moderate ratings on Goodreads um yeah and Lala I saw read it and she said it was going to be five out of five except for the last like quarter of the book so that makes me a little nervous and uh especially if I'm like kind of critical about it already but yeah so that's that's that and then um as far as audiobook I listened to a little bit more of um Vanishing Acts by Jody Pico and it is so boring. It's so long and like we have gotten chapters and chapters of like the dad is in jail. Again, this as a reminder, this one's about the dad who kidnapped his own kid and now like 28 years later he's found out and so he's in jail and it's the trial and we get so much of his life in jail and the friends he's making oh, and it's okay, baby and um, just his life in jail and what he's doing and that's boring and driving me crazy. So I am gonna go, my daughter just tripped and so I'm gonna go comfort her and make dinner and then I will check in later, bye. Hey guys, it is Tuesday morning about 10 15 and we are sitting outside playing on our deck. So, um, that's why the change of scenery, but I just thought I'd get on and let you know that I finished vanishing acts by Jody Pico last night. Well, middle of the night because pregnancy insomnia, I was up from like two to three 30. So I finished it and I'm giving it three stars and I am a fan of Jody Pico and this is by far my least favorite. Uh, there was just so many rabbit holes that had nothing to do with the story and and it was like she couldn't let a good guy, good guy be a good guy and that really frustrated me uh, the book is about a woman I think I might have told you, but I don't know. A woman, um, she is like in her 30s. She has a daughter. She's engaged. And she finds out that her father actually kidnapped her when she was little. And so the whole story is the trial of her father and just her trying to like piece together who she actually is, what her identity really is. And so it's that. So um, she also was told her mother was dead. And so there's some mystery around that. Um, and the case, she's living in New Hampshire, but the case happened in Arizona. So they go back to Arizona and the majority of the book is set in Arizona. So um, we meet some characters there and it goes into rabbit holes about them that are underdeveloped and not good. And uh, there's a lot of alcoholism in this book. There's three people that are alcoholics and I just don't feel like it was dealt with well at all. Like one person had been clean for like two years and I don't remember any mention of AA counseling, rehab, like seemingly they just decided to stop or something. I don't know. And that and I have experience with alcoholism and that's not how it happens. Like you don't just 
okay, I'm now I'm clean. And especially they were around drinking all the time and like it just wasn't very realistic. It wasn't handled very well. Um, the whole, like there's three people that were alcoholics and it was just overdone and never really handled well in my opinion. So then, um, there were big plot holes too, like the whole math of how old, um, people would have been in like, as far as the parents, when this little girl was born, like the dad would have been like in his thirties and the mom would have been like early teens. And if that was truly the case, that wasn't mentioned at all because that would have been like major statutory rape. So I think it was just a case of her not doing the math quite right. So, um, just a lot of big plot holes, a lot of rabbit holes that, that like never had anything to do with anything. And there was just a lot of, le a lot of morally gray characters, but it was like confusing as to did she want you to like them or not like them? And what was the point of making them morally gray? And, uh, and the other thing I really hated was Delia is our main character. She grew up with two boys as her best friends. And one of them is the guy she's engaged to and has her child with. And, like, she acts like the two guys are interchangeable. Like, because they're all three still friends. And she acts like they're interchangeable. And they, like, kind of act like they're interchangeable. And it's, like, kind of a poly polyamorous thing. But never, like, called that. And I, I don't know. And, like, there's not anything between the two guys. I don't know. It's really weird. Really, I would say her worst book that I've ever read. So, I'm giving it three stars. That's maybe a little generous, probably more like two and a half. And I would not recommend that if you haven't read Jody, Jody Pico. And if you have, I would probably still not recommend it because it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth. Like most of her books are like four stars for me. And so for this one to be so not great was like a shock and just a bummer. So if you've read that one, let me know. Because I know there's a lot of people that are Jody Pico fans. So if you've read that one, let me know if it's just me or if you didn't like it as well. So um, then I picked up for, uh, you say it first by Susan Mallory, and that is the first in the happily ink series. And it's so far really cute. It's about a girl who she owns a wedding, um, business in this town called happily ink and it's called wedding in a box and they do like theme weddings. And so she actually inherited the business from somebody like from whoever owned it before and her family's all in banking and like finance. And so her doing this is like kind of a disappointment to her family and so it's about her doing these theme weddings and then she meets this guy who's like a, a craftsman like a, he does woodwork and he's coming to restore some um, panels for her but she needs a guy to stand in and like this Roman Greek theme wedding and so he they start a friendship um, there is some insta love for sure and him and his name's Nick I think and he's got four brothers I think I think there's five of them, but only two are mentioned, and uh, they're from Fool's Gold. And so I have not read the Fool's Gold series by Susan Mallory, but I think if, if you had, it's probably a little fun Easter egg following um, Matthias, Nick, uh, I can't remember the other brother that they talk about, but and I think they said there are five of them, but I don't know. So, uh, yeah, if you've read Fool's Gold, let me know. I wish I would have read it first just because then I would have some background on these boys and their family. But whatever, I, I didn't. So I have the whole Happily Ink series. So I'm going to try to binge that real quick this week. So that's where I'm at. Um, we are going to, today is our last day of owning the old house. And y'all, my husband is still over there cleaning out the garage. So I think that's part of the reason I did not sleep because we like, I can't believe that they're doing the final walkthrough at four. So, um, and then I think I said something before about my dishwasher not working, like it quit. And so we thought Kansas is in a shelter in place until April 19th, at least. So we thought it was going to be like at least three weeks of no dishwasher. Uh, but I, they called yesterday and I guess Sears is going to send somebody out today between eight and five. So, um, that's good, except I guess, I, I mean, it's just hard when somebody comes over because we kind of like sequester ourselves and then corn or and then cl Clorox everything. So, um, yeah, but that will be great if we get a working dishwasher. So that's what we're doing. We're going to go over to um, the old house and do a walkthrough of the inside and make sure everything is gone. And then we are going to um, 
do Jimmy John's for lunch because they have, they now sell just like baguettes of their French bread. And I put some soup in the crock pot this morning. So we're going to have that for dinner. So we're going to, I'm just going to pick up lunch and then also a baguette. And so I already did my online ordering and I'll go pick that up. And, um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if any of you guys are Candy Crush players. They're doing 24 hours free every day this week, I think. And so what I really want to do is like lay down and listen to my audiobook and play Candy Crush because I'm so tired. But it's beautiful. It's like 50, 56 out. And so we're outside and hopefully we'll be outside a lot today. So my daughter has to go to the bathroom, so I'm going to wrap it up here and we'll talk to you later. Hey everyone, I just thought I'd get on an update. It's about 5 o'clock on the Tuesday, and um, I have about three hours left in the audiobook of You Say It First by Susan Mallory, and I'm liking the book. It's pretty um, insta-lovey, but it's cute with her owning the wedding shop and him being the carpenter or, or like, I don't know what. I guess Carpenter and um, just their relationship and kind of getting to know the town and she does like she does um, theme weddings and so she had she's got like some eccentric brides and listening to her plan those weddings is kind of fun so um, it's really quick really like very light and easy and I feel like this is exactly what I need and um, it'll probably be like a three and a half and I'm just gonna keep going with the series and kind of stay in this happily ink world and I think that feels really good so I also read my section of today's reading in the creeping and I guess let me just grab that um the creeping and I'm reading this again with Karen from rather be reading and there's just a lot of plot holes in here for me that I'm like zoned in on and I can't get over and so it's a little weird um, we're not sure if this is like, uh, this is a great, great buddy read, I would say, because we're not sure like if this is a typical thriller with like a, a human murder, if there's something paranormal, if like, we have no idea what's going on. And so it's really, really fun talking to her about it and like having our guesses because then at the end we're going to be either way off or maybe one of our crazy guesses is right. So um, I'm really enjoying reading this with her. The book itself is probably like a three star, but um, we're reading about 90 pages a day. Today was a little shorter. So um, yeah, it's like five o'clock. We've already talked to her. It's already tomorrow morning and tomorrow midday, maybe by now. And so I might, I've got like half an hour here before dinner. And so I might read a little bit of this, but we've got to go to the bathroom. So I'm going to go and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday and it's about 2.15, 2.30. I just put my daughter down for a nap and I have not updated at all today. So I have a couple things. Um, I finished for uh, First Time in Forever last night by Sarah, or uh, Susan Mallory. And that's the first in the Happily Ink series. And I gave it three stars on Goodreads, but like three and a half. Um, it was good. It was very cute, but very basic. And uh, nothing, nothing exceptional. But like I said, it kind of fits my mood for what I want right now, which I'm fine with being three, three and a half star reads of just cozy, tucked into this community, happily ink. Um, I thought the main male character was a little bit of a jerk, but he was just, he's from a family of artists. Oh, sorry. And they're from Fool's Gold. And so I wish I would have read that series first, but I didn't. And so he's from a family of artists and he's kind of arrogant about it and so I just didn't love that, but overall it's pretty cute. So I started this morning, um, second chance girl, I think is what it's called, which is the second one. And it is about her friend. Um, I'm blanking on her name, Carol, I believe. And she takes care of a bunch of wild animals. And then it's another one of the brothers. So the brothers are all, it's a family of five boys. And I think, Maybe three of them are artists, and so it's about, and they're the ones from Fool's Gold. So um, the first book was about Nick, and then the second book is about um, Matthias and and this girl named Carol who takes care of the wild animals. So um, yeah, I just, I'm not very far into that. I Today um, has been kind of crazy. We did a bunch of stuff around the house, and then we finally closed on our old house, and so... Um, it was kind of a frantic morning of my husband getting the last of our stuff out of the garage, I guess. Um, and then our realtor came by and brought us a closing gift. So that was super sweet of her. And then um, I had a friend come over 
and her and her three-year-old son and my daughter and I went on a walk outside and so we just maintained our distance from each other and from everything nobody touched each other and so I'm hoping that was okay and it was very nice to get a little bit of social interaction that way and then we came home and ate some lunch and then um for some reason right now, like I'm just getting incredibly nauseous every time I eat. So I came and laid down and my daughter came and laid on me, which is really helpful. And, but we both just read our books. And so I'm reading The Creeping and I'm reading today's section. I still have like 40, 45 pages left. So while she's napping, I'm going to try to get this done and then talk to Karen about it. And um, that's it. And so later tonight, I will probably listen to more of Second Chance Girl and um, I don't think I'll finish anything today because we still have another section or two. I'm not sure if it, I think, I don't know when we'll end. Maybe Friday? I don't know. I think we'll end Friday. And so I won't finish that today and I will not finish Second Chance Girl because it was like an eight or nine hour audiobook and I am maybe an hour in. So that's what's going on. Um, it's a beautiful day, another very windy day. It kind of is exhausting to be out in the wind and it makes allergies kick up and so I don't know if we'll go back outside, but um, my daughter is currently like staging a full on musical in her room with her stuffed animals. So I don't know that napping will happen. So I'm gonna get going, try to read my 40 pages and then maybe go get her if, if she's not napping. So that's it, we'll talk to you later, bye. One more thing I completely forgot to say is that this morning we decided that we are going to do a live show on Monday night. So it'll be Monday, April, 6th from 7 o'clock central time to probably 8 o'clock central time. It will be on my channel, I believe, but it will feature um, Sarah from Steeped in Books, Steph from Steph's Romance uh, Romance Book Talk, um, and, and like a bunch of the hosts. We're going to try to do Zoom so we can get 10 of us on there, and um, it'll just be talking about what we read during the Romance but, uh, romance Takeover Buddy Read this that's happening this weekend. So please, please, please tune in because we're doing it on my channel, which I'm a pretty small channel, so I'm hoping we'll get some interaction and people will come in and tune in. So um, I'll mention it again sometime in this vlog, but just mark your calendars. Monday, 7 o'clock p.m., my channel. Be there, be square. Hey everyone, it is about 2.30 on Thursday, and I just thought I'd get on an update and let you know that I finished happily, or er, Second Chance Girl, um, which is number two in the Happily Inc. series by Susan Mallory. And I'm going to give it three stars. It was okay. It was really just like a pretty dull story, honestly. It was about um, Carol, who is the, like, um, I forget what they're called, but like the the groundskeeper and like the one who manages the animals in the like reserve area. Um, and so she's got a lot of wild animals and she's kind of a tomboy. And then her sister, Violet, who is a much more girly girl. And she um, has like this relationship with um, some sort of nobleman from the UK. And well, she like met him when she was like 14 and he said she was going to like develop into a beautiful girl or something. And she like has held on this crush forever. And so then he comes to the States because he thinks she's stealing from his grandma. And it just is a weird, like that whole storyline was like, what? I, I could, I couldn't buy into it, but so it's that romance and stuff. And then, um, Carol and the brother of Nick from um, the first one. It's Matthias, and he is a, another artist. And so it's Carol and Matthias and Violet, and I forget what the nobleman's name even is, but it's their relationships set in this town of Happily Inc. And so we get a little bit of Nick and um, Palace from the first book, and we just get a little bit more of the community. And honestly, like there's five brothers, um, Nick, Matthias, Ronan, Ro Ro Ronan, something like that, and then two others who are not artistic, and so they are just like kind of the black sheep of the family, um, and one of them is getting married too, so that's like a backstory, and so really the whole point of that storyline is just to show um, like what Matthias's parents are like, and so yeah, this whole story was like pretty dull and boring and felt pretty long, 
And so um, I'm hoping the series gets better. The first one, like I said, was three and a half stars. The wedding, all the fun weddings were kind of fun to read about. So it was a little bit better. This one was just like kind of unfocused and bleh. And so um, the next one is a Christmas novella. And so I'm going to read that. It's called A Very Merry Princess, I think. And I don't know who it follows or anything. I've just kind of committed to binging the series. Except, you guys, it's five books, I think. I have the first four. And to get the fifth one um, from my library is a 24-week wait. What? Like, this is not a new series. It's like just kind of a run-of-the-mill romance series. But I guess there's two copies. And there's like 15 people waiting. And... This is for the ebook or maybe the audiobook, I don't know. But 24 weeks. So I guess I'll read the first four and then pff, see you in half a year when I read the next. So I don't know. That's kind of weird. I might see if I can get it some other way, but now I'm going to read two and a half. But anyway, I just sat down on our couch. I've got the baby monitor and some water. My daughter's down for a nap, hopefully. And um, so I'm going to read my book, which is The Creeping. I'm going to read my section for today for my buddy read with Karen from Rotherby Reading. And I'm actually going to try to finish it today because the readathon starts tomorrow. The, um, romance takeover buddy read. So if you haven't heard about that, I'll link my announcement in the, in the description below. And, um, just as another shout out or another like self promotion, we are going to be having a live show on my channel Monday night, 7 p.m. Central. Please join us. Tell your friends because I'm a small channel, so we need as much hype as we can get. But it's gonna there's gonna be nine of us, and so it's gonna be so 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 fun. And um, yeah, so join us for that live show. But so I want to get the creeping done, so then I can just have a fresh slate by Friday tomorrow. I don't know if it's gonna happen, especially because I sat down and do you see a book? I don't see a book. I forgot to grab it. So I'm going to get up, get my book, read as long as I can. It is super gloomy, and today is like 65, but tomorrow is going to be 40-something and raining. And so the next two days are going to be kind of a indoor thing. Um, today, let me think. What We just went like rogue on this house. We did a lot of cleaning, a lot of organizing, a lot of unboxing because, like I said, my husband um, just got the stuff out of the garage yesterday or two days ago of the old house. So, um, we just did a lot of work around here and then my mom came over and so we played in the driveway for a little bit and then, um, now she's napping. I'm going to read and then we're going to do a Walmart grocery pickup and, um, dinner tonight is just freezer food, like leftover stuff that I've made in the past. So, um, that's the plan. I don't know. Well, and then tomorrow, oh, the great, dishwasher saga. I don't know. None of you are probably care about this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because we have American Home Shield, which is like a thing that it's a warranty for any appliance or like thing in the house. So you can buy it as the buyer or, or like in this case, the seller provided it. And so you just have to pay $75 and they'll come out and fix anything and you don't pay for any of the repairs. So I put in this thing saying our dishwasher wasn't working and our microwave's not working two like essential things for me and so they weren't working so they said they would come Tuesday between eight and five they give you a really narrow window and so they never showed up so I called and spent an hour and a half on the phone Tuesday night all to find out like we don't know what happened they'll come Thursday so that's today well last night at 9 30 p.m. I got a text that said our service had been canceled so I called this morning, another hour and a half later, they're supposedly going to come tomorrow. <sighs> I'm so sick of it. So, um, yeah, so tomorrow the dishwasher guy is going to come and then you can see we decided to stone our fireplace. Let me see if I can, well, I guess I shouldn't do that, but, and I'm trying to do this without like turning the camera around, but you can see enough that it's not done. And um, my husband has done what is there so far, but then he realized like, hey, I'm not a, mason, a stone mason. I don't really know what I'm doing. Let's call in some help. So he's going to come tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, so it's going to be a busy day tomorrow. So we're going to, my daughter and I will probably just hang in the basement while this upstairs stuff is being done. And then we'll sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. So um, yeah, I'm done rambling. I will let you know um, if I finish anything 
because I'm a, I'm gonna start a very merry princess soon, and I'm gonna try to finish the creeping. So I'll let you know next time I finish something. Hey everyone, we are just getting home from um, doing grocery pickup, and I just thought I'd get on and close out this vlog because. I'm reading The Creeping by Alexandra Sirui, and I have like 60 pages left, but I don't think I'm going to finish it tonight um, because I'm also reading A Very Merry Princess, which is um, a novella. It's two and a half on Happily Ink by Susan Mallory. So I don't think I'm going to finish anything, and tomorrow starts the Romance Takeover Buddy Read Readathon. So I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Um, if you have read any of the books I talked about, please let me know. And if you're participating in the Romance Takeover Buddy Read, let me know. And that's it. I hope you have a great, great weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe. We'll talk to you later. Bye.